Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to this long overdue video. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at building and detailing Tamiya's M8 Greyhound. So in this part, we're gonna be focusing on the lower hull construction, as well as painting and weathering the interior of this kit. So I'm gonna be building this mostly out of the box with a few basic aftermarket upgrades that we will be including. So I'll talk us through the various upgrades that I'm going to be adding as we come to it in the build. So the first upgrade we're going to be adding is this simple drop-in upgrade set from Resicast, which is their precisionable steering for Tamiya's M8. It also works for M20 as well. But this is a very basic update, so I just have to remove the front axle and just clean that up. And we're just going to keep continuing to assemble our rear axles as well as the suspension from the kit in preparation to add our resin drop-in. So now to add our resin drop in, I'm just going to attach our new axle with a little bit of CA glue. I'm just going to start assembling both the new resin upgrade parts, which is also augmented by the kit's plastic parts. So for this we're going to be using both a mixture of CA glue and plastic glue, where appropriate should I say. As you can see it's a very simple little upgrade, it literally drops straight in. I did make a small mistake on the axle linkage, as you can kind of see it doesn't quite mate up to the uh, new axle, but that was my fault and not the kits. So I'm just actually going to mount the kit supplied wheels here, just to ensure that I get the axles to align up correctly, as I want to position these wheels slightly turned, but I want to make sure that every wheel will actually touch the ground. So I'm just using the kit supplied wheels for this. We will be replacing them later with some resin upgrades. So with the suspension and steerage now done, we're just going to keep adding the various other lower hull details such as the tow hitches and lifting eyes. Again, it's a very simple kit, it's an absolute joy to put together. It's actually one of my first times ever building any of the M8 or M20 family from Tamiya and they're absolutely fantastic little kits. The only little modification I did to the exhaust, I just mentioned it now because I didn't film it, is I just bore out the exhaust just to hollow it out to add a little bit extra detail. I'm just going to add a small box here onto the fender. And the fit here is absolutely beautiful. Everything just locks together and just needs a small amount of glue to lock everything into place.
So now we're moving on to the interior. So when you're working with interiors, especially ones you want to display, therefore you're going to have to paint and weather them, you do have to consider a few things quite early on. What things to leave as separate sub-assemblies and what parts to install into the kit. So I'm going to take you through the full painting and weathering that I do for this interior, which is a great introduction, especially now with so many full interior kits coming onto the market. And this is a nice little kit to practice uh, before going on to more complicated things like uh, a take on a uh, full interior uh, King Tiger that I may or may not have in my stash. So we're just going to keep adding here just a few little interior parts. Now again, this is a very basic interior. I could go on and add further details, but I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. I want to keep it somewhat accessible to someone just wanting to experiment with weathering interiors and painting interiors. So I'm going to start adding some details to the terrace interior. And for this, we're going to take some Mr. Surfacer, which is in this case Mr. Surfacer 1500, I believe. Can't quite remember which one. And I'm going to start stippling this on to create a little bit of a cast texture. With the Mr. Servicer allowed to dry, I'm just going to start adding the ammo racks for the, I believe, 37mm cannon uh, that these M8s had. Now these kind of line up a little bit strangely. I, I think I just wasn't that careful. However, um, just be a little bit careful lining up those ammo racks and it should be fine. Now I'm going to do something a bit strange here. I'm actually going to only glue the ammo racks at the rear of the turret, only onto one of the turret sides. And that's going to allow me to be able to separate the turret half so I can paint them individually. So again, I'm just trying to make sure everything mates up correctly while uh, the glue sets. And that's why I'm just taping everything together here. So now we're moving on to our gun breech assembly. So for our gun breech assembly, we're going to replace our barrel, in this case one from RB Models. These are relatively cheap, you get them for about seven euro. So I'm just going to remove the kits part by just carefully paring it away. Now it does require a little bit of clean up, but nothing that a hobby blade and a sanding stick cannot achieve. So again, just test fitting, make sure everything is plumb, everything lines up correctly, and just hand fitting things as I need. And then once I'm happy, I lock everything down with a little bit of super glue. So the details on this breech block is pretty nice, actually. It's a very simple gun assembly, but it's not bad. We get uh, basic sight and uh, gun shield details here, or recoil shield details. So now we're going to add a very simple little detail to our M191930 cal machine gun and I'm just going to 
bore out the barrel. It's a solid piece of plastic here. And I'm just gonna hollow it out by just first scoring it with our, our hobby blade and then just taking an appropriate size drill bit and just by hand twisting out that bore. Now while the glue is still set, or while the glue is still setting, I'm just going to make sure everything lines up to the gun mantlet. It's better to do this now where you can adjust things rather than finding that the sight and coax doesn't actually fit through the gun mantlet later. So now moving on to the turret basket. This is a very simple little assembly. I'm not going to do too much detailing on that at all actually, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Not much is going to be visible once we put a crew into the turret. So with our interior sub-assemblies built, now it's time to start preparing for painting. And for this we're going to prime our model with a little bit of Surface Primer 1500 Black. And I'm also going to take all our sub-assemblies and mount them onto small um, handles for ease of painting. I've also masked off areas I don't want to get paint on the plastic just to make the bond for painting later easier. Add our first base coat for the olive drab, we're going to take some Model Air Dark Green, which is my go-to for their um, olive drab interior. And basically when it comes to US interior vehicles, anything visible through an open hatch is green. You can see the floor of a turret or a turret basket if it's an open top vehicle like a, a, an M8 armoured car or a tank destroyer that has got an open roof, then it's going to be green, so they should not be white. So I'm just going to build this up in a couple of small coats, again just tend it down with a little bit of flow improver. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight to our olive drab by using a little bit of yellow ochre. So just add a few drops into my cup here, mix it thoroughly, and I'm going to start working this slightly lighter colour, slightly more desaturated, and I'm going to work it into the centre of my panels. Now I'm going to push the highlight a bit further by just adding a few more drops of yellow ochre and just a few drops of flow improver just to help thin things down ever so slightly. Again, make sure you mix everything quite well and I'm going to focus this right into the center of panels. Just being a little bit careful, I just want to draw attention to certain details and just create a little bit of wear and tear. So now for the white interiors, which will be the sides of the um, hull, we're going to use some Tamiya X2. So I've tinned this down with some lacquer thinner. I have a full Tamiya painting guide on the channel, so a link in the description to that. And I've tinned it down about 70% uh, lacquer thinner to paint. And I am just slowly building up this colour. You can see that I've masked off the interior floor, not to get any overspray. Now this might trigger some people just after saying that anything visible shouldn't be in interior white. However, it seems that some of the photographs I've seen of M8 turret rings seem to be white with an azimuth indicator around it. So I'm going to take a little bit of an artistic 
gamble on the few images I've seen of the interior ring and I'm just going to paint them white while everything else is going to be OD. I'm just going to pick out some of the other smaller details, such as the fire extinguisher. For the ammunition, we're going to take some Mr. Metal Color, in this case it's their brass. My first time ever using um, a Mr. Color, especially when they're metallics, and I have to admit, even though the camera really struggles to pick up, these are immensely vibrant and really nice metallics. They are a bit fragile, however, so you do have to handle them with a bit of care. They're very easy to scratch. So with the paint dry, we're going to start lifting our masks. As you can see, um, I've also masked the edges where I'm going to have to glue um, parts together. Now here's the big thing. As you can see here, I'm lifting quite aggressively the mask off the model um, air paints and it's not pulling the paint. So now we're going to start adding some chipping effects and for this we're just going to use some basic colours. We're going to use dark green, yellow ochre and Iraqi sand and these are going to be our basic means of creating chipping in our interior. So I'm going to mix up the dark green which we use for the olive drab with a bit of yellow ochre and this is going to be our chipping colour. I'm going to put quite a bit of yellow ochre into it and using the sponging method we're going to focus on any leading edges. Now we will add a bit of exposed metal and for this we're going to use some model colour German Camo Black Brown and again using the sponging method we're just going to tap this in to some of the areas that we've already gone over with our lighter mix here. It's a very simple way of doing it and it's just nice and quick, it doesn't take a lot of time. I'm also going to use our this colour to add some chipping on the white areas. I go a little bit too heavy in places so make sure you don't have too much paint on your sponge. Um, take the excess off like you're doing a dry brush, dab it into a paper towel and keep as little paint as possible and it makes it very easy to control. So with the chipping done, we're going to start adding some other details, such as painting in the uh, rubberized eyepiece for the gun sight. For this, I'm just going to use some Vallejo model color uh, flat black, as well as uh, I'm also going to use a flat black to paint in the leather cushions on the seat and both the hull and the turret. I've also picked out some of the other details such as the radio and the uh, dashboard for the uh, driver's console. So now it's important that we seal things so we're going to add a little bit of Flejo premium gloss varnish and this is going to be the preparation for our oil filters just to break the surface tension.
So now moving on to my favorite part of modeling, which is weathering. And for this, we're gonna be using quite a few different oils and pigments from 502 Octylong that I've picked up over the last few months. So we're gonna start off by doing a dot filter. And for this, I'm gonna take a small bit of cardboard and I'm gonna take a few oil colors. It can be any color in particular, ones that just kind of um, work well with the color you're using. So for the greens, I'm gonna be using ochres and whites and blues, uh, as well as some darker colors for the interior white. Now by using that piece of cardboard as my palette, you leave it for about 12 to 24 hours and it will pull all of the oil, excess oil out of the paint. So when you start applying your different dots with the brush like I am doing here, um, they dry really quickly. It just helps, speeds up the process. I'm using different uh, shades of kind of greasy colors as well and shadow brown. I'm just doing different dots here and then taking a brush that's been moistened in white spirit here and this is going to start pulling these dots in a single direction. Then I'm going to switch to a clean um, wide bristle brush and I'm going to start blending these back. You want to have this effect as subtle as possible. You really want most of this to disappear. And then I'm going to take slightly more warmer colors for the interior olive drab sections that you can actually see. So I'm going to use a lot more of the ochres and whites on the interior of the turret here. Now another really simple effect is what's known as a panel wash or a panel liner. So we're just going to take some 502 Shadow Brown, one of my favorite oil paints out there. And I'm just going to mix it and tin it really heavily with some Artist White Spirit. And I'm just going to prepare our surface by just um, breaking the surface tension with a tiny amount of White Spirit over the areas I want to flow our wash into. So I'm basically going to focus anything that has raised or sunken detail or anything that protrudes and has an edge that I want to frame. So you can see here, I'm just uh, working my way around the interior here, any type of raised detail or anything I think needs to um, cast a shadow or outline I'm just going to work the wash into. It's a really simple effect, it really diffuses a lot of our work as well and makes everything work together. So with our pin washes allowed to dry, I'm just going to add a coat of matte varnish just to lock everything in. So this is a Fleo Premium Matte, so this is going to knock back the shine and make things look a bit more realistic as we don't need that glossy surface anymore to break surface tension. So with the matte varnish allowed to dry, now it's time to start adding our pigments and for this we're going to be using this set from 502 Octylong which is their European land set. I'm just going to take the random colours that are included and just mix them into my palette here. 
So I'm going to do a general mixture of all the colors, and it's going to make a tone that I really like. A kind of like a mud-like tone. I, I kind of like making them a little bit deeper and more intense. And then I'm also just going to put some of the individual pigments into the different palettes here. So I'm just going to start tapping our pigments into some of the leading edges here just where mud and dirt would accumulate. It's a nice way just to give yourself a point of reference. So any area that you think someone's boots might start rubbing mud onto the interior of the vehicle is a good way to start. And I'm literally, with everything dry, I'm just tapping my brush that's got a little bit of pigment on it and I'm just tapping it into the model. And I can keep going back, adding different colors, mixing them together. And once I'm happy, I'm just gonna take some Tamiya X20A of their, no, this is their um, alcohol tenor. This is, so don't use their uh, lacquer tenor for this, use this their normal 20, X20A tenor. And I'm just going to tap my brush onto the pigment. So I'm gonna fill it, I'm gonna load my brush with it, the X20 tenor. I'm gonna use it as a pigment binder and I'm just going to tap the brush onto the pigments. I'm trying not to brush the pigments around. I'm just letting the um, brush flow the X20 on top of the pigment. So again, I'm just building up the pigments here, like I am here now with the interior of the turret basket. So any area I feel where the crew's feet would gather, I'm just kind of piling little deposits of pigment. And then I'm filling up a clean brush with X20 thinner, and I'm just dabbing um, the corner and letting the pigment, or not the pigment, letting the thinner flow and um, bind with the pigment. So once I'm happy with the pigments, we're gonna add some more environmental um, weathering. In this case, we're gonna use some leaf scatter. This is just some simple birch seeds. You can buy them online for easily. Just gonna use a little bit of water to, or tinned down matte varnish, about 50-50 matte varnish to uh, thinner, and I'm just gonna use that, lock it down, and that's gonna be the binding agent. So once I'm happy with everything, I'm gonna start doing the final fittings. I'm also going to mount our radio set here and our fire extinguisher. So the interior is looking a little bit more fleshed out. So now I want to add a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna take our shadow brown that's been on our palette for the last week. That's how long oil paints can last. And I'm just gonna tin it down, just to reactivate it with a tiny amount of white tinner and just paint it on like a paint along the edge of the radio shelf here. And I'm just gonna start blending it out with a brush that's been moistened in white spirit, just to create a kind of a grimy, lived-in effect here. Perhaps the uh, radio operator has been serving the radio and has built up a lot of grime. So there you go, guys. I really hope that this video proved uh, interesting to you and gives you some ideas, perhaps uh, tackle your own interior kits. So do join me in part, part two. We're gonna be focusing on detailing the upper hull and adding uh, loads of stowage. I have a few more aftermarket sets ready to go. And I really hope you guys enjoy this. Again, sorry for such a long delay for this video. Hopefully I shall have more time to get more videos out to you this year. So guys, thank you so much. I hope you're all keeping safe in today's climate and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.